Hello, mate. Hey, bestie. Just up in the tea room bit, making a few yeah. tea. Which ones do you got one? I might need a hand. Uh, I'll come down. Come down, have a little look. Alright, mate. Mm. <laughs> Welcome to the warm up. <laughs> Welcome to the warm up, I'm Stu Wakeford and with me as always is my bestie, the ambassador, Marcus Gale and the Beyonce to our Kelly and Michelle. Carly Osmond's back, how are you lads, you good? I'm good, thank you. All I'm very well. well, Stu. I think it's about time, Marcus, we made this permanent, isn't it? Yeah, he looks good this side of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to this side, yeah. I'm glad I look better than the TV, I'll take that. <laughs> We've got to get your name on there as well, it's official, full-time announcement, Carly Osmond joined the team. Hopefully you won't be missing it again like last week, but no. you're all good now. A bit poorly last week, weren't you? Yeah, a bit poorly uh, last week, but I'm all good. I'm all good. Sweet. And that means, did you manage to get to the women's game? I did. Yes, I did. Uh, not the greatest result, but to be fair, the performance was decent. Um, it was a difficult pitch to play on, but the girls, they gave what they could. And mate, we've been hanging out loads lately, haven't we? I we've know. done, what is it? Thursday last week filming this, Saturday, Tuesday, Tuesday, every couple of days. I know. We'll, we'll be get... moving in next, next, next week or something. Next week. <laughs> Did my invite come on email? Is it come by email, post? What's it have? Um, post it. Not involved yeah. in yeah. it. Post we'll get post. We'll get post. Okay. You've been too poorly. Anyway, we'll be in the, we'll be in the social bubble. Um, also, it means you missed out on his singing. Yes. Have you seen it? No. You, you haven't missed out on it. I look forward it's to seeing awful, it. But he got away with it. You got away with it big time. I'm still not happy about that. <laughs> Look, we've got loads to talk about this week. Um, these boys go head to head in a little FIFA challenge. Uh oh. You're fuming about it, innit? You? <laughs> He's honestly, his head's come off early doors. Uh, we'll get onto that in a little bit. We'll talk about the new third shirt and Ethan Pinnock. There's a new feature for us, first and last. So basically, he just chats about first and last things he's done and what he likes, basically. Anyway, let's not skirt around it. Let's get straight into it, two-footed. Stoke last week. We watched it at the event. That was a good event, wasn't it, actually? I loved the event. That it's was probably the highlight. Just to see the fans in, in the stadium. Um, and that murmur of them talking and, and having their sort of conversations around some good food as well. Yeah, look, game-wise, not the greatest. We, we can't always sit here and talk about positive stuff, yeah. and it's, that'd be too easy. Um, the formation. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Um, it, it just did, it's worked for us in the past, that formation, but it didn't work for us on Saturday, did it? Yeah, for whatever reason, it just didn't seem to sit well with the players. Did they look out of place at times? I think yes, especially down our, our right-hand side, where the goals had come from. So um, there was a lot to, lots to try and repair going into that second half. We had a mountain to climb after that such a poor start. Um, myself and Marcus discussed it at the event. Carla, do you think it was more a case of personnel? Thomas kind of alluded to this, but he also said that it didn't matter if we played a different system, he probably still wouldn't have won. But do, do you think it was a reaction to the personnel rather than Stoke? Yeah, I think, I think sometimes that can happen. Um, obviously, when you've got players missing and key players missing, it can make a difference. Um, and that time to adjust to the system as well. Stoke obviously came and kind of took their chance as well. Um, but those, those things happen sometimes. sometimes when you, you haven't played for a while, when you're coming back in, you've still got to try and catch up and things like that, and you've mm. got to try and settle in, um, and, and that takes time, unfortunately. And we obviously changed formation at half-time. Have you always played in games where you've changed system before half-time if you've noticed it isn't working? I've played in a game, yeah, um, where it got changed kind of three times. Um, three times? Yeah, which was, it was difficult to do. If as a player, when you're playing, it's kind of like, you want to settle into something or play something that you know. Um, and it, it didn't really kind of work for us in that instance, no. <laughs> but because obviously I'm, I'm watching it going, why aren't we changing this? Why aren't we changing it? But is it a case of just getting in at half time and then you can regroup properly, you can organise it better rather than just something on the sideline? Almost if we'd had the um, water breaks, yeah. that yeah. could have been an opportunity to yeah. do yeah. it, but obviously we don't have them now. 
Yeah. So is that it? is that why you wait for half time so you can properly I, get into it? I think so, and it's also the character of the individuals in that team as well. What effect it's going to have on them if they, you just quickly change it after 20, 25 minutes? Um, the impact it's going to have on them. So I think the safest way to do it is probably at half time, but you can have them for a certain period of time to implement what changes you want and give them the right instructions. And what about coming into a back three like that, Carly? Like if if you've not played regularly with certain people. How tricky is that as a centre-half? Yeah, it can be tricky because those relationships are key. Mm. So although you might train with someone or be around training, it's not the same as being in a match situation. Yeah. And you do need to kind of work out what your, your partner's like and making sure you understand kind of, you know, their key attributes or what they're good at, things they might not be great at. So you can right. counteract that and make sure you're covering and things like that. So those relationships are key and they take a while to build up. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've got these two systems that we do go to a lot. How many systems will clubs normally have that they kind of work on and how often do you work on a shape for each one? Is it more on a, in the summer, you'll work on a couple of systems and then you work on it game by game in between? Or I think your systems are like your, your kit selections as well. You've got a home, away, you've got a third and I think the systems probably reflect that as well. You've got your main shape that you want to play. You've got an alternative just in case you have to just tinker it a little bit but also you've got that third card in your pack just to pull out. As a, as a backup to anything that goes wrong. So I'm sure there's going to be at least three different kind of combinations of shape. There was one big shining, like Marcus Force coming on, mm. uh, his link-up play with Ballon d'Or winner Ivan Tony at times. I mean, <laughs> let's get on it. For, the, for this goal in particular, that pass from Ivan is brilliant and great composure from Marcus. I wish you'd actually played up front with Marcus Force because then he could have been Gale Force. That would be in spot. Oh, that's the headline you've done there. Well. I like that. Hey, that's the hey. best one you've done. <laughs> <laughs> if that's the best ever. one I've done, ever. if that's ever. the best one I've done, we're struggling, isn't we? <laughs> that is ever. I enjoyed that one. I did. <laughs> struggling big time. Um, but seriously, do you think that could be the third system then? Those two up top? Yeah, I, I believe that could be it. But it's how you fit the others around it. You know, you've got a Brian that needs to play wide right, cutting in on his left. Um, you've got Godos who can play wide left, Sergi play wide left so it's just tinkering around what's the best system but you know what if the front two keep scoring goals at the rate they're doing it's going to cause a problem it's going to cause the manager to really rethink the shape and how how to go forward in the future yeah because how does that work Cause obviously they work really well individually but they they've now shown they can do it together if they both score all the time you've how do you go well actually no sorry marcus you're gonna be on the bench this week and i'm just gonna start people like, i've just got two and mm. Ivan's just scored two. Yeah. But they're both just scoring two every game for some reason. It's, it's hard. It is hard. And I suppose the manager can have a choice to make. He either kind of fits them into a system somehow and works upon that, or he's going to have to leave whichever one he feels mm -hmm. he needs to leave out, really. Um, if you've got two strikers that are regularly scoring, I'm sure he'll try and find a way to get them both in the team at the same time. Mm. Um, it's only going to pose more threat. So um, it's one of those decisions that he'll have to try and try and make soon. I mean, I don't know how I've managed to turn such a positive thing into a worry. <laughs> like, what are we going to do? Why are you scoring? It's so annoying. Um, but on, on Marcus in particular, yeah. I saw a great um, description of him as from Mark Bonner, I think it was on Twitter. They likened it to a young Alan Shearer. Now, you played with a young Alan Shearer in the FA Youth Cup. Played against uh, him. Against him. All right, yeah. <laughs> Edit that out. Um, against him, are there any similarities? Yeah, they hit the back of the net. That's it. That's the main thing. At that young age, they, they know where the net is. They really strike cleanly through the ball. So they're not shy in front of goal. And I like that uh, attitude from him. But he works hard as well. Alan Sherrill worked his socks off in, in his teams. Um, and Marcus does that for us as well. So that's a really pleasing point. Do you think it's because he, he, he likes to lever yeah. the ball, doesn't it? Like, yeah, he does. He has a great he, strike. He through it. He's, he's not like he's a... He's got a lot of confidence. Mesa. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, it was Ivan who did get the nod in the end against Norwich. Back to four three three. It was much improved, wasn't it, on the weekend? Yeah, it was much better performance. Um, it was a good game. Norwich were a good team. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Brentford kind of took the lead. Probably slightly disappointed they couldn't maybe hold out. Um, but long term, I think it will be a, a good point. And I think kind of with Norwich, like a lot of people said, oh, it was a good like you just said there, a good point against a team that's going to be up there. But we're brilliant as well, weren't we? So they, surely we should be hearing yeah. that from them going, wow, we managed to get a point away at Brentford here. They should be thinking that, but I think we just went into that game giving Norwich a little bit too much respect. We know how good they were on the ball. They played really good in tight areas and we just sat off them. We didn't really press from the front as we normally could. But once we got the goal, which I think was a 
against the run of play just a little bit. Um, once we got the goal, our confidence grew and it took a little shine off um, Norwich's performance. They put them on the back foot for a few minutes, but then they got back into it. So, we're, yes, we're going to be disappointed, you know, just to, to concede the last few minutes of the game, especially at home like that. Yeah, look, when we did have that spell, to be fair, we were on top. Sometimes you've just got to take your hat off. Tim Krull pulls off a couple of worldies. This one in particular from Ivan. What a save that is. Yeah. Yeah, he just reached out big to his, his right-hand side. Like this one at his feet as well. For such a big guy. He's agile enough to just keep his feet and, and block. But he kept him in the game. Out of the two keepers, he got worked the most. Right, that was a proper little football chat, isn't it? That was, was quite decent, good. I enjoyed that. That was right. Look, Smooth. I want to know, who was the first footballer that made the two of your jaw drops? Ooh. Should have probably George. prepped you on this. Maradona. Maradona. 86, World Cup. Carly? Mine would have been uh, David Ginola or Ian Wright. From really? what I can remember, yeah. David Ginola, because my mum used to fancy him. So. <laughs> Weird reason for your to wow. So I end up used to just watching him loads, like, because right. she's always, yeah, that's that's why, <laughs> that's why I ended up watching him loads, right. yeah. Um, and what about the last? And then Ian Wright, I was an Arsenal fan, so once, yeah, yeah once Ian Wright, I wanted, I wrote a book about him when I was a kid, and wow. I loved him, but you wrote was a never book as a him. kid. Wow. What are you doing here? If you're it's, writing, it was books. about four pages, <laughs> <laughs> and most of them were pictures. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, what yeah. about the last? I would go for. Jaden Sancho. Yeah. I skills. just think he's just got that raw street footballer's mentality. He takes it out onto the pitch and, and displays it as well with the stats he's got. Carly? I'll go for a Sterling. Yeah. I think the way he's improved and come on under Pep has been fantastic. So I'll go for a Sterling, yeah. Do you going to ask me? And what's yours? First player, probably Marcus Gale. No, it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> well, last player, probably Carly Osborne, to be honest. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was even putting the same thing. And here's what he said. Probably my dad, really. Um, obviously, he's really big on sports and stuff. I used to go to park with him and my brother, and my older brothers, and just playing football. And I think, yeah, watching their love for the game and uh, really made me get into it from a really young age. Playing in the front room at home, kicking the ball, breaking the glass, mirrors and stuff like that. I think what uh, Rashford's been doing recently in terms of all the school kids, um, underprivileged kids getting their meals and stuff, I think what he's doing is fantastic and the fact that uh, that's something that's really important to him and something he experienced himself. Um, so for him to, to put all the effort he is into that is something good and I think for other people to see, you know, it puts a different perspective into footballers. Would have been maybe six or seven when I was at a team called Glebe. That's the first ever team I played for. I don't remember the goal, but I just knew that I'd scored, I'd scored a, quite a few goals for them. So yeah, can't specifically remember it, but yeah, I know it was for them. That was the header against Wickham um, in the Carabao Cup. So yeah, that was pretty recent as well. So just I think just a big shame is that there was no fans there, but you know, um, something that will be with me. Getting released, you know, I don't, I don't know if I was crying, but you know, it's probably one of the biggest downs that I've had in football. So you know, as a young boy, it's tough to hear, and you know, you kind of got to pick yourself up. So yeah, that was probably the first time I really got down about football. Even though it is difficult, I think just keeping that self belief and knowing that within you, you know, you're capable of of achieving what you want. Again, I, was, I wasn't actually crying, but obviously the playoff final, that was, that was a really tough one to take. After such a long, hard season, getting ourselves in such a good position. I was at um, Mill Academy back in them days. We used to go and watch the first team play. So the first game I went to, I think, was Mill against Palace. Palace against Tottenham at Selhurst Park, so Palace is like a local club to where my parents live. So yeah, I went there a couple of seasons ago to watch them against Tottenham. I remember being about 13 or 14 and with me and one of my friends, we was in HMV 
and there was like they were doing deals for like two albums for like ten pound or something. So I think we got Skepta, Microphone Champion. That we got that was part of it, and then I can't remember what the other one was. The most recent one I downloaded was Detroit Two by Big Sean. He's like a, an American rapper. This is probably a surprising one, but from when I was at Dulwich Hamlet, there was a player there called Erhan Otsuma. He's at Charlton, he's on loan to Bristol Rovers at the moment. But yeah, at the time, he was both at Dulwich Hamlet, and you could just see that it was like, just way too easy for him. Like, he used to score from a halfway line and just run through like five, six players and score. And he was tiny as well, he's about five foot two. And even on them pitches, like, you could just see he was unreal. Probably Saeed, you know, some of the, uh, against uh, Fulham, like watching, watching him do that in training quite regularly. But then, you know, doing it in a match, that's a whole nother story. And, you know, all the time you see, you see his show rule, it's just ridiculous. Some of the stuff that he pulls off and, you know, to nutmeg one, uh, someone and then put it in the bottom corner, you know, what more can you ask for? I was in year three, it was a Christmas play and um, I don't know, at the time it seemed a good idea but you know the, the teacher said he wanted to beat Angel Gabriel in the play and I thought it would be, be a good idea to do it so yeah I was, put my hand up and then got voted to do it and then once the big day came I, like, I've got like these big massive wings and a halo on my head and holding the stick and I'm, yeah. Not for me. Yeah, I can't maybe get a nutmeg in training or something like that. Uh, Ethan mentioned there about being released by Mill at a young age. Obviously, his words now even more poignant with the um, tragic passing of former Man City Academy player Jeremy Whiston. Um, lads, I want to talk to you about this. Obviously, at the, at the time of recording, the coroner results actually aren't up, so we don't know the cause of death. Um, but his family have kind of said that more support is needed not only for players, but also for parents and education in, in that regard. Um, I know this is a subject that you two both have very strong emotions about. How did you both react to the, the news? Yeah, it was, um, it was obviously extremely sad news to kind of hear and see. Um, and my thoughts go out to his family at this, um, at this time. But I think, I think it's right. I think more support is needed for, for young people in, in that sense, especially within the football industry, because it's ruthless. You know, it's, it's kind of... You finish school, you're into the system, and then it's you got a year, two years to prove yourself. Otherwise, it's end of the road. Sometimes it can feel like, mm. um, especially if you, you know you might not have the the support system necessarily, or um, enough support from from people within the club to kind of guide you after that point. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was tough. And, and Marcus. The family thing was a really interesting mm -hmm. point to see them say, and support for them. And they said they didn't yeah. really know how to react, and they, or they didn't maybe see the signs, what they were looking for, and stuff. Like, is there enough being done on that side of it as well? Um, obviously not, but there has to be more awareness um, as a parent as well. That you, you need to be aware of what industry that, that your child is in. It's, it's brutal, as Carly just said. Um, there's a lot of pressures. Don't forget, we've got academy players around the country that are 9 and 10 and they're already thinking about their adult life already which is you know it's not normal yeah. a normal 9 or 10 year old is not thinking about what they're going to be doing as an adult they're just being a kid and I think we kind of lose track of that when we're dealing with young academy players is that we're treating them as, as if they're adults already but they're still young minds they're still developing and, and parents need that extra additional support in terms of looking out for key signs, having those conversations around dinner table or, or the journeys into the stadiums and stuff. But um, it's, it's terribly sad. Hopefully we don't have to really go through this again, but you know, every club can take that sort of lead and um, that initiative to, to check in on the young people that work at their club. And Carly, at the early point of your career, before you came to Brentford, you had similar situations where you were rejected by clubs, weren't yeah. you? How yeah, did you deal with that? I mean, I was rejected by five clubs before kind of coming to Brentford and getting my opportunity, which was, um, at the time, it was extremely, extremely tough. I um, found it really, really difficult. I was fortunate enough that, you know, my um, my mum and dad were, were brilliant in terms of 
helping me pick myself back up and, and keep fighting. Um, but it's difficult, you know, every kid who's trying to follow their dream, every time you get told no, it's like you're kind of dreaming and, and life's snatched away from you in that moment. Um, and it's, it's not always, it's not easy to deal with at all. So it, it was difficult, but fortunately enough, I, I had a good support system and I had people around me who kind of um, helped me to keep going and brushing myself down. And it is obviously a really, really heartbreaking story, mm. but I know the two of you have, have been great with your, your social media channels and you, you work closely with young players and your channels are open, aren't they, for yeah. people and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And yeah, I know sure. it, it takes a lot for a young player or older player. This is probably also happening to experienced players that are now yeah. finding themselves at a club, but I guess it takes a lot to speak to someone when, mm. when, when, you, when you need it. It's, um, it can be nerve-wracking and stuff. And for young people, I guess stories like Ethan's, and Jamie Vardy's that we see as well, mm -hmm. is one that gets thrown out a lot. They're really big and important for these people to see that, you know what, one little knockback or a couple of knockbacks, you, you still have got opportunities. And I, I do mean this not just because you're my mates, but it is amazing mm -hmm. that you do open these channels up to people. And I guess we, as the three of us, we can just say, make sure you are talking to people. And yeah. and that, that's all we for can sure. really do, really, I guess. Um, yeah. And look, um, Last week, um, Steve, I begged him, can he show us a sneak peak of the third shirt. He gave us a little bit. You weren't happy though, were you? It was only a tiny glimpse. You wanted more. You told I us wanted you wanted more. more. Yeah. Well, look, it was well worth the wait on Monday. And here's a little behind the scenes video from that day. And we get to see Steve's face and his little hair. Why are we here on the river, you might ask? That's where the origins of our great football club began. Back in the Rowan Club formed in 1888. And they needed, a, they needed a winter pursuit. Uh, what were they going to do? How were they all going to get together over the winter months? They went to the Oxford and Cambridge Hotel. They had a vote, and luckily for us, eight votes to five. They came out in favour of the round ball rather than the egg. The new shirt picks out a number of details from the kit of the team back then, particularly the salmon, claret and blue. With this shirt, we want to nod back to our past, nod back to our uh, beginnings, given that we have a new beginning now, a new stadium, a new stage and a new era, hopefully, for the football club. Steve, please don't sack me about the hair thing. Um, look, we'll be wearing that shirt against Swansea here under the lights on Tuesday. That's exciting. And the shirt, it goes on sale on Monday, but you can get it on an exclusive pre-sale from the newly reopened club shop on Braemar Road from today. As in today in the future. This is Thursday, but you're watching this on Friday. It's open all weekend. Anyway, you get what I'm talking about. Here it is. Absolute thing of beauty, isn't it, lads? It is you, very when I finally nice. get into the show, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Great looking top. You having it? Yeah, I like that. Yeah. You buying it? Got to make sure you're in shape wearing that. <laughs> Mate, what are you going to say? Of course I have. Um, right, that probably means we've got to do a rowing challenge, haven't we? It seems so. Yeah? Get you on the water? Let's go for it then. <laughs> Come on then. I'm going to hammer you. <laughs> um, do players care about kids? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Most, one of the most important things, you've got to make sure you look good. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you just didn't care, you just care about the football. Nah. Um, well, look, <laughs> one thing people do care about, especially players, is FIFA. Now, we were going to do this last week. Obviously, Carly was a little bit under the weather. Apologies. Um, so, let's have a little FIFA versus, shall we? Right, so we got FIFA cards made up for both of your final <laughs> seasons at Brentford. Size of them great. Carly, you're showing yourself. Mate, please I'm, turn your round. I'm happy with mine, I know that one. All I'm going to say, <laughs> um, you didn't give birth to this person here. Also, so on Carly's version of the game, they had his headshots. Yeah. So yours, they didn't do a photo, did they? So this is what... They just couldn't be bothered, did they? This is what FIFA thought you looked like. Mum, I apologise. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> nah, it's, it's reasonably accurate. But that... Yeah, it's accurate. 
He hasn't got the eyebrows. Where's the eyebrows? I don't know who this imposter is, but it ain't me. I mean, you're livid already. It's wow. not a good start. Um, wow. <laughs> but what we're going to do is we're going to see who's got <laughs> the highest stats for each of the attributes. Let's start with pace, right? <laughs> who, who do you think's got more pace? I don't know. I also want to say that I'm having such a good time here, right? He's been messaging me going, thief is a joke, thief is a joke. He sent me two pictures of him going past Gary Kelly in a <laughs> car saying, my pace better be I. Because honestly, look, look, I've done both of these in these photos. I <laughs> found these photos on the internet. So who do you reckon's got higher for pace? It, it must be Carly. I'm, I'm going to be confident. Right, me. let's have a look then. Come on then. You've got to take your heads off. I mean, or I'm someone's head in your face. Oh, oh, yeah. And he... Oh. Wow. 881! That ain't bad. 81! <laughs> 49! 49! I was at the start of this year. I mean, <laughs> who's signing? We've got the word. Oh. Who's signing a winger with 49 bags? Wow. <laughs> now, the left foot was a one, though. Didn't have to yeah, run. Oh. That's it. First yards <laughs> in your head. You're welcome, First baby. yards in your head, wow. mate. Wow. Right. Dribbling. Wow. Nah, that's a liberty, though. Nah, no, that's a liberty. Hold up. You ain't that's seen mine a liberty. Yet. You ain't seen mine yet. Hold Come up, on. hold up. Six yards. What's up, man? No, I'm, I'm raging. That's thirty-one. <laughs> that's only that just order. over half. If it's <laughs> like out of a hundred. That's right. No, nah, come on. To be fair, it's one all at the moment. This game is shooting. <laughs> I mean, is there a forfeit on this? Say, no, I say it's oh, one thank all. Goodness. I don't think anyone's winning really so far, are they? Jeez. Shooting. Come on. You scored loads of goals. Premier League. <laughs> Proper good at shooting. <laughs> Bang, let's go into shooting. I'm going Carly's going to win. You I'm think Carly's going to win? I have to go, I have to go, Marcus. I have to go. Go on. Oh, uh, they're again. taking. <laughs> no, they are. They're taking <laughs> liberty. It's ridiculous. Yeah, but you only score with your head. I've, listen, I've wrapped a few in the top bins, I can promise you that. <laughs> I love how proud you wow. boys are getting. Right. What's that, 2-1 to me so two far? 2-1 somehow. How, how am I only... Get, I'm not even getting in the 40s. 31. <laughs> 30s. Wow. Right. Defending. <laughs> 59. But as a winger, not bad. Yeah, they're averaging it. Not up, bad. So, I'm Carly, nervous now. this is your main position. Oh, God. This is your whole career stat, basically. 67. Whoa. 67. What am I? You're only 15. eight below him. 67. <laughs> nah, on. FIFA's doing me. They're doing me dirty. What's that? 2-2. <laughs> <laughs> not even that. Not even a 71. Oh. <laughs> right, passing. Come on. Oh, I'm having so much fun. I can't you believe it. Me or you? You. You've <laughs> won it now. <laughs> it, should be. it should be, but judging on FIFA. 60. 60. I mean, wouldn't shout oh. about that. 60. <laughs> 46 <laughs> for a pass. I don't know. I don't know. I've played the game. I don't know how many to play. To be honest, physical. <laughs> Young Carly Osborne in his prime. Marcus, look, look, you know look. what? I'll be disappointed on this because I do remember playing against a young Wes Morgan. Yeah. What in and he, he tried to beat me up. And <laughs> right, let's he was beating on the wrong person. That day. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I'm. Just, so I'll be disappointed. You'll be disappointed. I'll, I'll be Angry. Myself. I ain't gonna get angry. If I get angry, the set's messed up. <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> ah. 63. 63. Oh, 86, eh? 86. I mean, I'm almost thinking maybe you should have been an athlete. <laughs> well, yeah, I think I was <laughs> in the wrong <laughs> thing. Of a I've done the effect. wrong sport. Stereotype. <laughs> the only wow. things I'm, literally, the only things I'm good at is my pace and physicality. <laughs> wow. Couldn't do anything else on the pitch. <laughs> That's four. That's four. 63. But there's My mum so... raised better than that, I'm telling you. There's, it's three I'm all. human, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm raging. That's not a cough. A this is me cough, in my prime. That was wow. Actually, with the end game, this I is me in my prime. I was 35. This is meant to be me prime. At, the, at the best. <laughs> at the best. But it's three all, but there's one more. So the I heads at the top. More. Well, it's your overall stat. Well, Who do you think like. was better overall? Gailey. <laughs> better. Right, go on then. Oh gosh, here we go. Come on, you go first. 59. 59. <laughs> oh no. Wow. <laughs> wow. So I'm good at two things, but it's, it's wow. so false. 
No, I will no. say though, there was one year in FIFA I was a silver card this on, is an on the FUT. I was good. Everyone kept messaging me. I want to me. meet this person. <laughs> I want to see this person. So look out for this dude. If he's going by the name of Marcus, oh, call dude. me. <laughs> oh, I'll take you can keep them. The best. I, no, I don't want it. <laughs> I can't even bend it. <laughs> look, Carly, you've won that. No prizes for you, my wow. friend. But it's a different uh. story for you lot at home. We've got some of these copies of FIFA 21. So by the main man, Ivan Tony. This one's going out to our winner last week, Ryan. But one of you could be winning this copy if you answer correctly who Marcus Force said would be the Strictly Come Dancing King. I think there's only one answer. It's going to be Dom Thompson. Two weeks in a row for TikTok Thompson. Sergi will be devastated. Thanks again to everyone who entered. We do appreciate it, don't we, lads? We do. We do, we do. Um, right, Marcus, using all of your 63 strength, <laughs> delve deep into your bowl. I was going to ask Carly to pass you the bowl, but he probably wouldn't have made it to you. Have to do um, this. You might actually have to help him out here, mate, just to see if he can lift it, because you have got 81, obviously. Yeah, you got the better strength. You know, <laughs> thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who is our winner, Marcus? Uh, ben Jackson. Ben Jackson, go. a copy of FIFA 21, signed by Ivan Tony, is on its way to you. This week, we asked Josh De Silva, because it's Halloween, who the scariest member of the squad is. Um, because he likes to shout a lot and um, tries to boss everyone around. Um, right, so who do you think Josh said was the scariest member of the squad? I can probably guess, to be honest. I think you all probably can, can't you? Um, get your answers into all the usual channels. And Marcus, if he's recovered from lifting that bit of paper up, will try and lift another bit of paper up for us next week. I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> right, lads, on the Halloween theme, who's the scariest players you've played with? Scariest player I've played with... Um... Jamie Lawrence used to make me nervous when I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he made everyone nervous, didn't he? Yeah. Any reason yeah. why? If you didn't do what was meant to be done, he would let you know. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Politely, I take it, yeah? Yeah, very politely. But <laughs> yeah. you, you knew, you knew. Yeah, Marcus? So. He, he looked the part as well. Yeah, he walked he did. around in his shades and he had a little pouch as well. <laughs> so it was like, questionable. What about against? <laughs> um, oof. Any scary against? Against? Ooh, he scared me uh, against. It's, it's a tough question. Nah, no nah, one. I never, I never, Fearless. No, nah, I didn't fear anyone. Was well, that physical? You, right. you, just run away. Saying, yeah. you just run away from him, yeah, Exactly, you? yeah. I knew I was quick enough <laughs> to run away. my strength, I feared everybody. <laughs> you just like, like, please don't touch me. me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you try and be scary ever? Like, try and, you know? I did, yeah. Yeah, yeah later on in my career. I've seen there's a picture of you squaring up to someone on your Instagram, actually, isn't there? Who's that, Kenwin Jones? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you've got to let people know, haven't you? <laughs> I'll be honest, he's probably one I was scared of. He wasn't, he wasn't the easiest person to deal with, to be fair. Nah. <laughs> well, look, that's it for this week. Carly, you're definitely in for the season. I am definitely in. We're going to get your name on there. Yes. Uh, remember, you can watch us tomorrow at Luton on iFollow. £10 for your match day pass at brentfordfc.com forward slash iFollow for your codes. Tomorrow, it's also the second screening at the stadium down the Legends Lounge. I'll be down there. I've heard there's a little ruby on the menu, so that'll go a long way. Thank you very much. Um, after Luton, we host Swansea here at the stadium. That's an earlier kickoff time of 7pm. Chris Deacon's award-winning programme for that game is available via the Curtis Sport website. By the way, if you want a review on that programme, here it is. My dad loves it. Um, right, no show next Friday as we'll be doing a live broadcast from the Middlesbrough game at 2pm. Um, well, that's if, to be fair, someone decides to turn the stream on. Um, all this live stuff, eh? What can go wrong? Maybe we'll do no, one of these no live pressure. on the first thing. No yeah. pressure. Um, <laughs> have all. you guys all right with your fever cards? What have you done with them? Are you going to keep them? I'm going to keep mine. I'm going to cherish this even more, though. My lovely jumper. Tell sent us about in that. by Laura. You eagered out with the water bottle. This was my sort of prize that you gave to me. I'm going to cherish it. It fits really well. Thank you very much. And I'm a small. What are you? I'm a large. Yeah, physical. Bang. <laughs> anyway, have a lovely weekend, all of you. Hopefully six points this week. Come on, you bees. You reds!